Hello, welcome along, I hope you're all doing well. We're back in Microsoft Flight Simulator for another video and today I have a bit of an update for all you Xbox PMDG 737 pilots. Now unfortunately when PMDG pushed the previous 737 update through the marketplace there was a bit of a conflict which caused a couple of functions to stop working. Uh, our SimBrief integration within the FMC broke along with the performance calculator on the Universal Flight Tablet and whilst everything else was still working perfectly it was a bit disappointing to have that shiny new tablet with some key features missing and I have had a few comments on some of my videos uh, asking whether the bugs have been fixed yet so let's find out and what I'm actually going to do is show you a quick quote from Robert Randazzo at PMDG and this is taken directly from his current forum post uh, which explains what occurred in a bit more detail and he says a few weeks ago we published a very small update to the 737 product line and immediately began to collect feedback that the tablet had inexplicably ceased communicating with the airplane. We reached out to Sobo and Microsoft because our analysis of the failure mode pointed to the same problem we experienced with Microsoft's in-house intake tools earlier in 2024. It has taken some time but tonight we were informed that our suspicions were indeed correct and the intake tools Microsoft uses to bring products into the Xbox ecosystem through their intake process had gone reversionary and broken the 737 tablet link. Microsoft has updated the intake tools again and they are reprocessing all four 737s on the Xbox platform so that we can double check their work and approve them for release to you. We anticipate that we will get access to these reprocessed builds early in the coming week and that they should release to Xbox users hopefully on Thursday. And then he goes on to say, thank you for your patience as we pressed our partners over at Asobo and Microsoft to help investigate this issue. With everything they have going on with Sim Update 15 and MSFS 2024, we were happy to be able to get just enough of their attention span to confirm that action was needed to resolve the problem. So there we have it, and since that post was made, we've now received that update through the marketplace. And I'm delighted to let you know those bugs have been fixed and everything is back up and running. So. Let's dive in and show you guys that our SimBrief integration is now working as intended. So first of all then we need to head down to our EFB and just make sure on the settings tab that we are logged in with our SimBrief alias, which I am, so that's all fine. And then we go back to the home page and we need to uh, request the data from SimBrief by clicking this big blue button here. So I have a flight plan set in SimBrief, let's click that. And there we go, that's brought in uh, a flight from here in Luton uh, up to Edinburgh. Right, so let's head down to the route page on our FMC. And what we're going to do is we're going to click on the request flight plan button there. And there we go, as we can see, there's our Simbrief flight plan there. So we click on that and that'll import everything we need. It's got our departure airport, our destination, our alternate, our initial flight level. Uh, cost index, uh, all that good stuff. We've got our zero fuel weight, our reserves and our block fuel as well. So what we can also do here is set our payload from Simbrief by clicking the button on the left and also we can set our block fuel if we click the button on the right and there we go that says Simbrief block fuel set. And then all we need to do is hit the select route button on the bottom right and there we go that'll start importing all the relevant info. Uh, it'll just take a few seconds to do that so we'll just clear those messages while we wait. And there we go, we've got the root uplink ready, so we hit the load button on the bottom left hand side and that is pretty much it, it'll just take another couple of seconds to uplink our root. Just a couple more seconds, there we go, and now we can hit the activate button and then we hit execute and that is it. Our flight plan is all loaded in directly from Simbrief with all the relevant waypoints we need. We can scroll through those. Um, obviously we still need to enter our departure and arrival info but uh, I think you'll agree that is very cool. I'm also going to come into the FS Actions menu and hit the Fuel button just to double check those figures have all been brought in from Simbrief. That looks fine. And the same with the payload. Again, all imported from Simbrief. So, Ordinarily I do all that myself, I like to uh, work out all my own fuel calculations but it was really just to show you the functionality of the SimBrief integration. Okay, so to the second bug fix then, let's click on the performance calculator icon and see how that's working now. 
And for our takeoff calculation, it's uh, pulled in our airport here in Luton. We can select our runway, which is 07, which brings in our elevation and runway heading. We can also select our runway condition, which is currently wet. And then we can also import our aircraft details. So we've got our takeoff flaps, uh, our rating, uh, anti ice. We'll just leave all those on optimum. And if I click import from OFP, you can see it brings in our weight. Uh, in fact, let's import it from the aircraft because then we get our centre of gravity as well. So uh, we'll leave packs on for now. And then finally, we just need to import our weather. So click the import weather button. And there we go, it brings in our wind speed, our outside air temperature and our QNH. And then it's just a case of hitting the green calculate button. And there we go, magic. So it's calculated everything we need for our takeoff. We've got our acceleration height. We've got our flaps five for takeoff, our N1 of 98.15 our trim settings and also our V speeds, we've got V1 130, rotate 140 and V2 150. Okay, so moving on to our landing dispatch tab then, we can do pretty much the same for our uh, arrival into Edinburgh. So let's select our runway, uh, which will be 24. Again, it gives us our elevation, runway heading. Uh, let's set our conditions to wet as well. Um, aircraft will leave our flaps at 30, packs on, anti-ice off import the weather and again hit the calculate button and there we go it gives us our landing distance our VREF uh, based on our current weight and then if we come across to our landing on route tab that will be sort of pre-populated with a lot of those figures we've just calculated during the flight obviously these weights are going to give us a little bit of an in inaccurate uh, landing distance just because uh, we're a bit too heavy we'll have, we'll have burnt off a lot more fuel than that but um, again it's imported all the weather Hit the calculate button and it gives us our weight, our VREF uh, says 153 knots and our required landing distance of 6,655 feet and the available landing distance is 7,700 but as I said that's uh, that probably wouldn't be quite as long as that because our, our weight's a little bit too heavy. Okay, so as you can see we're back to having a fully functioning 737 tablet. And I think it's really great that PMDG keep us all in the loop with the goings on and any updates and fixes in the pipeline. And if you don't keep an eye on the official forums, I really recommend you do. It's a, it's a really helpful resource for any issues or questions you might have regarding PMDG products. And now we're only a matter of weeks away from the launch of that much anticipated 777. Uh, you're going to hear about that first on the forum before anywhere else. So I for one cannot wait for that. Right, that's about it guys. If you've not updated to the latest 737 for Xbox, I suggest you get on the marketplace, get it downloaded, uh, everything's working great now. And with that, I'm going to conclude today's video. Uh, I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Bye.